He's heading straight for us. Straight for us. Steady now. Steady. All the way from Australia and right into Singapore Harbour just to be run down by a Japanese tug. Citation. Presenting authentic stories of heroism and gallantry taken from the histories of war. The strange story of Operation Jaywick. Singapore, 1942. The Japanese were closing in on the doomed city, and a curtain of black oil and smoke hung low over the island. It was in this time of despair that the heroic feat, which was to be known as Operation Jaywick, was born. A group of English soldiers, escaping from the fire and destruction of Singapore, commandeered a mongrel lugger-type boat, and, after an extraordinary series of adventures and hazards, brought this waif of Asiatic waterfronts to Australia to become a key figure in the strange story of Operation Jaywick. Well, Paddy, how does she look? You're asking the man who should know. So me, Paddy McDowell, who served in Q-boats in the First World War, is about to tell you, Mr. Page... Lieutenant Page of the AIF, that if this here wreck gets us to wherever the brass is sending us, then I'll join the R with us. You don't think much of it was a boat, eh, Paddy? As a boat, she'd make a first-class chicken coop. No fear of the birds suffocating. Too many holes. And the engine? I've seen better engines in toy trains. However, it could be she'd live up to her name. Cry it. Some kind of deadly snake, so Major Lyons was telling me. But do you think we'll make it? Uh, good question, Paddy. The only answer I can give is that it won't be for the want of trying. The boat, now named the Cryat, that had been so perilously bought from Singapore, was being prepared for a return to the Japanese-held city. It was to carry a small party of British and Australian servicemen who planned to penetrate under the very nose of the enemy and take the war into the heart of his captured territory. Men of the British Army, the Royal Australian Navy and the AIF trained together in the technique they would use to pass through enemy-occupied waters into the compact harbour of Singapore. One of the party was Lieutenant Bob Page, a third-year medical student at Sydney University who had already been trained as a commando and a coast watcher. Although he didn't know it then, his father, Major Harold Page, who had been captured in New Guinea, had died in an enemy ship, sunk while carrying prisoners of war. Lieutenant Bob Page knew only that he was going to strike at the enemy. Hear that? This here cryot should be sleeping peacefully in Davy Jones' locker instead of gallivanting round like a blooming battleship. Two Lewis guns, two Brens, a dozen Owen guns. We ought to be able to handle anything we strike. If that mess of machinery they call an engine will get us there. See what I mean? Heavily armed and equipped with demolition charges and small commando-type canoes, the Cryat moved off on its extraordinary voyage to Singapore. The boat was old, the engine unreliable. But they kept on despite all the obstacles that came their way. You reckon she'll stay afloat, Paddy? No show. Should never have left Sydney Harbour in this wreck. Nice ending to air stunt. To sink up here in the air of Fura Sea. Can't keep her head into the wind. It wasn't meant for this kind of weather. You just discovered that. But the Cryot struggled on. She was no sea boat, but she had the great virtue of being like many other craft that dawdled through the islands of the east. Her appearance should not arouse suspicion in the yellow waters around Singapore, and her unusual crew, stained dark with dye and dressed in native garb, should be able to pass unnoticed. But the true test lay ahead. Keep down, men. Keep down. 
within 300 miles of Singapore, right in Jap territory, and we have to run across the bowels of a Jap freighter. You fellas know the drill. Action stations. Men on deck behave like natives. Take it easy now, and no panic. They're looking down at us. Wave to them, Dave. Ah, good work. Not too many of these close shows, please. I'm not as young as I used to be. So, through various perilous situations, they progressed. Occasionally, junks came close by, or enemy aircraft passed overhead. But the Kryit sailed steadily closer to her destination. Then came the day when they dropped anchor in a cove on a small uninhabited island named Pompong. They had gone within 30 miles of Singapore Harbour. Now was the time to leave the Kryat, and, under cover of darkness, make their way secretly in the small canoes to carry out the tasks they had planned. The six men set out in three canoes. Listen. We're listening. See you. I can hear it plainly enough. A diesel headed for us. Yes. We'll lie still. Now I can make her out. So can I. A tug. A jet tug. And it's headed right for us. I don't think they've seen us. Probably won't even feel us when they hit us. Just go right over us. Long way to come to get run down by a jet tug. They're heading straight for us. Steady, steady. Turned and missed us. Think they saw us? No, probably following a channel. Okay, let's get paddling again. <laughs> Freeze! It's a searchlight in Black Amati. It's sweeping towards us. Just a routine sweep. Routine or not, it could mean the end for us. Still, sit still. <sighs> Gone out. Let's get paddling again. Look at Singapore there. All oh, the lights on. You'd think the Japanese didn't know there was a war going on. It's how secure they feel. And we're here to remind them that they have no right to feel secure. they got a nasty shock coming to them. That suits me. So long as the shock isn't coming to us. The crew of the Cryot paddled closer into the city of Singapore where the lights blazed and life went peacefully on. In the canoes were the powerful charges the men planned to fix to the hulls of the enemy ships. Hold it for a second. Look at it. Ships by the dozen. Could be close to 100,000 tons. Let's go get them. Listen close, Jeff. Dock workers laughing. Laugh on the other side of their faces when the big bang blows their ships from under them. Steady now. Not too much noise. We're close up alongside. They can see us easily in the dock lights. Lit up like day. Careful now. We're going alongside this big one. Don't bump her. Easy now. Easy. Okay. Made it no sound. I'll go under and put the mine on the hull. Keep the canoe steady. How is it? <coughs> She'll be all right. Hand me the explosive. I'll, I'll stick it under the waterline. Bob, Bob, look up there. Look up on deck. A chap? Yeah, a chap. He's looking right down at us. Just standing up there on deck, looking down at us. This is it, mate. <laughs> As the Australians fastened their explosives to the hull of the big Japanese freighter, a Japanese crew member looked down at them. They carried on with their deadly work, and the Japanese sent a cigarette butt spinning to sizzle in the sea. Then he left the deck. It was one of those inexplicable things. They finished their work, then paddled the canoe to a nearby island to await the results of the expedition. Look at those monkeys acting like Tarzan in the trees. 
Don't you like the smell of flowers after the stink of diesel? What time is it, Bob? Almost it. Well, I don't know how you can burble on about monkeys and flowers while we're waiting for the result. Listen. Shh. Count them. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Heaven. Yippee! We've done it, Bob. We've done it. Seven ships were accounted for by those brave men of Jaywick. They heard the explosions that sent 38,000 tons of enemy shipping to the bottom. Then they paddled their canoes back to the rendezvous island, where Cryett lay waiting for them. But their perilous journey wasn't over. They had the long road home to cover, a long and dangerous road that was hedged almost every mile with danger. Nobody fire. Just stay put. Keep under cover. Is it a patrol boat, Bob? Yeah. The corvette by the look of her. She's got her guns trained on us and heading straight for us. Thought it was too good to be true. We passed Java and we're safe. But we have to run into a jack. Steady, steady. <sighs> She's turning away. She's turning away. If I ever get back, I retire from this kind of caper. I definitely retire. The gallant crew did return safely to Fremantle, where they did not retire. Another operation was planned to duplicate the success of Operation Jaywick, but disaster overtook them, and all were lost. After the war, the Australian Prime Minister lifted the veil of secrecy that had shrouded the exploits of the ten Australians and four British servicemen who went into Singapore. The citation with the decorations given to those men tells of their outstanding bravery and devotion to duty under circumstances of extreme hazard. The Prime Minister told of their strange voyage of 2,000 miles that took them through enemy waters for 40 days. He said, It was by such deeds that the Allies won the war. And the Japanese who executed the survivors added their tributes. They said, These were patriotic and fearless men, the flower of chivalry. All Japanese should be inspired by their fine attitude. And the leader of the operations, Major Ivan Lyons of the British Army, was entered into the order of distinguished conduct as was Lieutenant R.C. Page of the AIF and Lieutenant D.N. Davidson of the Royal Naval Reserve. The bravery of others of the party was also recognised. Their operation against the heart of the enemy in the dark days lives on as an inspiration. Citation. These stories are authentic. The program is produced at AWA by Donald Crosby for Army Public Relations. (laughs) 